Welcome to today's video. Today we have uh, this map before us here. Yeah. So this class is a very nice one. It's going to be fun. Yeah, we have this map to only paired question before us there. Yeah. The question is 2 to the power of a plus 4 to the power of a plus 8 to the power of a equal to 39. We are asked to look for the value of a. And again, the condition given is that a belongs to a set of integers. Okay, so how do we get our a from the Shaolin show. If you're new here, this is all I must TV where we play mathematics all the time. Stay back as we dive into the Shaolin. So, first thing first, we take a selection. Selection. Now, if you look at the left hand side of the equation, all the quantities on the left hand side can be expressed in base 2. Right? So, let's go ahead and rewrite everything here in base 2. So, we have 2 to the power of a plus 2 to the power of 2 or to the power of a plus our 2 to the power of 3 or to the power of a equal to 39. Okay, now if you look carefully, here we are having 2 to the power of a. So we want to strike a balance whereby we have 2 to the power of a in all the quantity we have on the left hand side. Is that possible? Yeah, if you look at the left hand side, we cannot express that in base 2. So let's only express this one in 2 to the power of a. Now, we're going to apply the law of indices, which says that if you have your m to the power of a n, this is the same thing as your m to the power of a in bracket or to the power of n. Okay, only move this in and bring this out to give us our m to the power of n r to the power of a okay so if we look at this law from indices then we can ship this ship this a in move this two out bring this a in move the three out so we're going to have this to be two to the power of a then plus our two to the power of a goes bracket out to the power of two then plus two to the power of a goes bracket out to the power of three Everything equal to 39. Right. How we get this sum from here? Now that we have 2 to the power of a, 2 to the power of a common to everything here, and we have the powers here. In ascending order, then we can do a simple substitution to bring in another alphabet that will enable us to solve for our a. So from here, we can say here, let this time around, let's take p. So let p be equal to 2 to the power of a. So wherever we see 2 to the power of a, we're going to put p in there. So let's go here. So this now implies, this now implies that our p, which is the first term, plus p to the power of 2, plus p to the power of 3, equal to 39. Okay. We just have to rearrange, starting with the highest power here, and move this term to this side of the equation. So we're going to have here, p to the power of 3 plus p to the power of 2 plus p uh, minus 39 equal to c zero. So we have this to be 0. What kind of equation is this? This is a polynomial equation of third order degree, right? In other words, we have to solve for three roots to this polynomial equation. Now, here we're going to use the trial by error method. And how do we get the first factor to this challenge here is to bring out this quantity here and bring out all the factors of 39. Among the factors of 39, we substitute the plus minus of each of them into this system. And we'll see the one that will give us the zeros to this expression. Now, if you look carefully and you do your simple substitution carefully, then we're going to have positive 3 as the one of the factors from this that we satisfy this. So it all means that our p minus 3 is factor. All right, so if we have p minus 3 as a factor, how do we get the other two factors from here? Because like I said, this suggests that we look for three roots or three factors. So here yeah, we're going to use the um, long division method to get the other two factors. So from here, using, let's say, using the long prediction method to 
we have these three let's draw our equation here so we have our p minus three and our dividend we have p to the power of three then plus p to the power of two plus p then minus 39 right everything here so we go gradually here now so the first thing we do here is easy we use this p to divide this p to the power of three and that will give us p to the power of two so we put our p to the power of two here we use this answer here to multiply this so this is going to give us p to the power of three we also use this to multiply this minus three this will give us minus three p to the power of two then we rule off and we subtract so we have if it's equal plus here, so plus p to the power of three minus p to the power of three. This this will leave this right. So minus times minus will give us plus. So p to the plus p to the power of two plus three p to the power of two will give us four p to the power of two. Bring down the next term here, which is plus our p here. All right. Again, we go with the division second time. P into four p square will give us plus our 4 p so we use plus 4 p to times everything here so this will give us plus p to the power of 2 then plus 4 p times minus 3 will give us minus here we're going to have our 12 p so again we subtract for the second time all right so plus p to the power of 2 minus here, four p to the power of two. This this leaves this turns to plus again. So plus p plus twelve p will give us thirteen p. We bring the last term here, which is um thirty nine. We do the last division. P into thirteen p will give us thirteen. So we have plus our thirteen in here. Use this to find this. This will give us thirteen p. Then use this to find this. This will give us uh, minus 39. Here we can do our subtraction again. This is minus. So this, this leaves. Yet turns to plus. So minus 39p plus 39p will give us zero. So at the point where we have zero, zero, we bring our quotient and our divisor into the same. Eliminating our dividend. We have our p minus our three. This is our divisor. Then our quotient is p to the power of 2 the plus 4p the plus our 13 everything equal to 0. so we have a quadratic equation here so we have two cases from here because we apply the zero product rule we say that we equate this to 0 we equate this to 0. so let's take case 1 so you have here case 1 so in our case 1 we have p minus 3 equal to 0. So therefore, we have our p is equal to 3. So this is our p1. Okay. So now we've got our p1 to be positive 3. We look for our case 2, right? So let's continue. I decide out the board and see what our case 2 will give us. And yeah, case 2. So what is our case 2? We have p to the power of 2. So we have p to the power of 2 plus 4 p. Then we have plus uh, 13 equal to 0. Again, this is a quadratic equation, so we can solve quadratically to get the two roots to this challenge here. But from what I can see so far, this is going to give us imaginary roots. So let's check if this will give us imaginary root because look at the condition given. Say A belongs to a set of integers, right? So from here, we know we're going to discard any imaginary root. So let's use our debt is equal to a check b minus b square minus 4ac, right? Okay, so this will now give us 4 to what is our b in the system? It's 4. So we have 4 to the power of 2 minus 4. What is our a? Our a is 1 and rc is 13. Those bracket. So this gives us here, or we have here 16 minus 4 times 1 gives us 4. And 4 times 30 will give us 52, um, right? So we have 52 here. So if we subtract, this will give us minus 36. So you discover that this will give us imaginary root. We don't need that. So 
So what we do here now, we come to the only root that is acceptable here, which is P1. And again, at the beginning, we don't have P. So we recall where we said, let P be equal to 2 to the power of A. So from here, we now say, let recall rather, we say recall, recall that we said, that's let P be equal to 2 to the power of A. So here we have P equal to 3, we want to solve for the value of our A. So we're going to have our 2 to the power of A equal to 3. Easy. So this is easy to solve, right? So how do we get this? We can either align both sides of the equation or we take log to base 2 or log to base 10 of both sides of the equation, right? Good. So let's take log to base 10. So from here, we have here log 2 to the power of a is a, then base 10. This is equal to log 3 to the power to base 10. Rather. Okay, so according to the law of logarithm, uh, which says that if you have powers, then move this to this side of the equation. So this is going to give us our a times log our 2 base 10. This is equal to log our 3 base 10. Okay, we are looking for a, right? So it's easy. So let's continue on this side of the board. So all we just need to do is to divide both sides by log 2 base 10. So we're going to have our a will now be equal to our log of 3 base 10 all over log our, our 2 base 10. So this is the value of a that will satisfy the original equation. Now with what we have here now, can we do a simple check if this value actually satisfies this original equation? Okay, let's take a simple check. So yeah, let's take check. We want to put these values into this original equation. Now, in doing that, we are going to rewrite this answer. According to the law of logarithm, we can rewrite this answer. And so this will be written as our log 3 base 2, according to the change of base law. So this is what we want to put into the place of A. So let's take our first one, we're going to have 2 to the power of log 3 base 2, then plus our 4 to the power of log 3 base 2, then plus our 8 to the power of log 3 base 2. Everything equal to 39. Okay, so how do we manipulate this? This is pretty easy. If you look at this, we're having 2 to the power of log 3 base 2. So these can cancel out this. So we left with 3 here. So what we do, we have to rewrite this in base 2, also rewrite this in base 2. So let's go ahead and rewrite this, this in base 2. So from here, we're going to have this to be 2 to the power of log 3 base 2. This one doesn't have any problem. So this is 2 to the power of 2 times log 3 base 2, there plus, here we have 2 to the power of 3 times log 3 base 2, right? Everything equal to 39. Okay, let's continue on this side and see what this gives us, where this guy will lead us here. Now, according to the law of logarithm again, the power law, we can move this to this side, move this to this side, okay? So we can move this to this power here. Then move this to this power here. We all know that law, right? So if we know that law, let's apply it here. So this now implies that we're going to have our 2 to the power of log 3 base 2 there plus. The next one we're going to give us here 2 to the power of log. Yeah, it's going to be 3 to the power of 2. So we have 3 to the power of 2 base 2 there plus. This will give us. 2 to the power of log, here we have um, 3 to the power of 3, so we have 3 to the power of 3, let's manage this, this, everything equal to 39, easy. Okay, so from here, we discover that this, we go with this, this, we go with this, this, we go with this, so we are left with what, our 3, yeah, plus, here we have 3, 
the power of 2, there yeah, plus, yeah, we have 3 to the power of 3, equal to 39. Wow. Easy, right? Okay. So, yeah, we have 3 plus 3 to the power of 2 will give us 9. Yeah, 3 to the power of 3 will give us 27 equal to 39. So, we cannot add up. So, 3 plus 9 will give us 12. Then, 12 plus 27 will give us 37, sorry, 39, which is equal to 39. So this shows that our answer here satisfies the original equation. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this math class. If you learn something from this question, from this challenge, from these steps, from the approach applied here, give the video a thumbs up. And again, if you have any question with regards to uh, this challenge, the approach, the steps applied, drop it in the comment section. Remember, this is Online Mass TV, and Jake loves you. And every one of us at Online Mass TV love you dearly. Thanks for being there all the time. Thanks for the encouragement so far. Keep watching Online Mass TV until we meet you in our next class. Keep winning. Bye for now.